Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And yes, that's right, you've got it. It's that time again. It's the time of month where all the votes are cast. And they're all in for the Porky's Corner Pound for Pound Helmet of the Month for June. 2019 and here we go the top 15 countdown number 15 Johnny Nelson well he's always there isn't he he's always in the mix but a bit of a quiet month for Johnny uh, he's not been uh, pushing himself uh, you know in the mix you know, like like he normally would have, uh, which has surprised me. You know, normally you've got Johnny Nelson. He is always in the mix, always. But he's been very quiet this month. I don't know why. Maybe he's uh, maybe he's seen the, the how many times he's in the Porky's helmets, and he wanted to tone it down a bit. But Johnny Nelson. You are a helmet of the month for June, rank number 15. So, you're there or thereabouts again, aren't you, Johnny? You're in the mix, but just you nearly ended up 16th if it weren't for a couple of votes this morning. But I think people need to, when they vote, they need to have a good look who, who has actually been a helmet because some of these I'm looking at here are a bit quiet been a bit quiet this month and <laughs> we've got a couple of corkers in that's probably going to get me into trouble but anyway so Johnny Nelson number 15 but like I said people need to go online and have a look and make their own decision instead of just picking the same ones so all right so Johnny Nelson number 15 in at number 14 I think this is his first time Joseph Parker hey eh? Joseph Parker now as far as I'm concerned Joseph Parker's alright but him and his team they're talking about you know how they want to get their belt back from Ruiz and you know what I mean and you know because Ruiz has got their belt and I think that's upset a few people and that's why they've got that's why they voted him now Joseph Parker, pretty decent kid, but he's going to dine out on that win over Ruiz now. You know, he's putting himself in the mix as, you know, I dropped Dylan White. You know, I ran out, you know, I ran out of rounds to beat Dylan White. I left it a bit late, and I beat Andy Ruiz, and look what he did to AJ. But yeah, you were lost against AJ. You had a chance to go for it, and you didn't. You played it safe, just like AJ. You know, you served up a stinker. If you'd have gone for it against AJ and grown a pair, you might have held on to your belt. But let's get it right, Joseph Parker, about that belt. It wasn't your fucking belt, was it? It was Tyson Fury's belt. You had it on loan. At the time, you were a world champion, right? But you didn't beat a champion. Now, you've got... The distinct now you've got the the prestige of saying you're a former champion and that you beat a champion because Ruiz is now world champion and you've already beat him, haven't you? So, but everybody everybody knew that he beat you, but he didn't get the decision, did he? You got a hometown decision, but it is what it is, isn't it? So Joseph Parker, you're a helmet of the month number fourteen on Porkies. So fucking jog on, right? Down at number 13, well, what can you say, he's back, he's always in the mix, but he just can't help it, you've got it folks, the one and only, Mr Tony Bellew, the bellend, the biggest bellend in boxing, the person who I don't like, and I'd have him as number one, but... It is what it is. I might like him in real life, you know, but when you've had people making phone calls and 
telling people they should fuck me off and things like that. How can you like somebody like that that wants somebody to fuck you off and you know so you so you lose your you lose your job and your position and respect and that. I can't fucking abide some fucker like that. So as far as I'm concerned, you deserve to be in top 15, but you should be higher than 13, Tony Bellew. But it is what it is, isn't it? But like I said, we all know you're coming back, so you'll keep training, and we'll keep making videos and slipping you in and ma and growing the the Tony Bellew myth as a man who has never beat a champion, Tony Bellew. Never beat a champion, eh? Never beat a champ. Never took a belt off anybody. Never took a belt off a man. How can you go to your grave doing knowing that? Four pay-per-views on Sky, and never ever beat a champion. It must really burn your head, that Tony. Anyway, you know when he when he has to wake up in the mirror knowing that he's a fraud, doesn't he? I don't. So Tony Bellew, helmet of the month, number thirteen. Number twelve, you little cock, Prince Patel. How dare you upset Coogan Cassius, you little cock. Now, what Prince Patel does, now, he rubs everybody up the wrong way. I don't know if he does it for attention. I don't know. But uh, he came to one of Dennis's shows years ago and uh, kicked it off. They were fucking throwing chairs. And uh, basically, Prince Patel, you're a little cock. And if I ever see you up at Glim Road's gym... Or at Dennis's gym or anything. I'm just going to put you in an headlock and I'm just going to rub your head with my knuckles just to just to show you up. I'll get you in Boston Strangle Old Lock, which is like a vice, mate. I'll get you in that and just throw you about a little bit. And then when you start wriggling and squealing, I'm going to say, It's only banter! It's only banter! When it ain't banter because you're a little cock. And I've heard what you did. So Coogan's right if he wants to uh, give you a slap. Because at the end of the day, what you don't understand about Coogan, he has a lot on his plate. He's a lot on his plate, that lad. Uh, and he's done well this last ten years, so you've got to give him his respect. He plays the game, doesn't he? I don't agree with all questions that he asks people when he gets them. And I don't agree with him promoting, you know, his certain favourite fighters all the time. And, and going to just interview the same old people all the time because they do views I'd like to see him give more time to uh, you know amateur kids and kids that nobody knows about you know but it is what it is isn't it he's, he's in it for money he's not in it for love of sport but I don't agree with uh, Prince Patel doing what he did so Coogan I've got you back on that one mate so but Prince Patel you are a cock that's what you are, Prince Patel, a cock. So, it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, helmet of the month, number 12 for June 2019. So, you're on the radar, Prince Patel, you're on the radar. In at number 11, helmet of the month, Jake Wood, you fucking prick. You're not a helmet, you're a prick. Jake Wood, what can I say about him? He's one of them guys, right, that you see slinking about, you know, slinking about boxing shows, rubbing shoulders with the right and correct people, but we all know he's only on, he's only goes to Eddie Hearn's shows because it's free, and he'll tweet about it, won't it, to all them gimps who follow him from EastEnders, and it's all about numbers. That's what boxing's become now. It's a numbers game. Talented kids don't get the opportunities. You watch how many opportunities Kid Galahad gets now. Very talented fighter. Doesn't do tickets. Doesn't do numbers. But a talented kid. And then you watch how many chances Dave Allen gets. Not as talented, but does numbers. That's just boxing, isn't it? That's just how it goes. 
There has to, we have to be in the grey areas. There has to be a mix of both. Fighters have to sell themselves. I mean, look how look how hard Liam Cameron punched for a middleweight. Massive, massive puncher at middleweight. Massive, icing people in gyms, sitting down on his punchers. Just mega, just a really hard puncher, but don't do a ticket, does he, Liam? Didn't do a ticket. If you go look on my videos, uh, second ever video I did with William Cameron, 200 views. First video I did on the same day when we signed Hakim uh, Nasser, that's done over, not over 900 views. So the point I'm making is, Nasser obviously got himself out there and sold himself, sold himself, didn't he? Liam didn't, did he? So, but it is what it is, isn't it? But uh, Jake Wood, getting back to Jake Wood, you're a fucking helmet, and you deserve to be number eleven. I'd have you in top five every week, me mate, because I've met you, mate, and I've seen you at boxing shows, and you're a prick. So, and I don't like you. So, I'm just letting you know. Number ten, Rob Tebbert. Don't know him. Uh, but he's had a lot of views. Uh, probably, he's got. He's he's probably voted. Uh, going on what people are saying, emails. Why they vote him? When you put when you put in your helmet, uh, when you put your helmet voting, obviously you can't put why you put in that person because that's personal, isn't it? So you need. That's why I always say email email me it. Put where you're from and why. And then I've got a good understanding of why what what's what, why this person's pissed you off because it's usually the same as what what they've done with everybody else. But Rob Tebbett, it seems, uh, seems to have pissed a lot of people off because of his constant rimming of uh, Eddie Earn now and Adam Smith and Frank Warren, people like that. When you're rimming people like that constantly. It's not good, is it? It's not healthy because you know where the, where people rim, don't they? It's where shit comes out of. Do you know what I mean? If you're rimming people, you need to get fucking mouthwash. So you'll have to slip a bottle of mouthwash in on insert after Rob Tebbett Nicola because he needs to fucking get a bottle down him or maybe fucking Savlon or TCP or fucking bleach where his tongue's been. But Rob Tebbett, your helmet of the month, number 10. You don't help yourself, but do you give a fuck? No, you don't. You don't give a fuck, but... I've been, just been looking for a picture of Rob Tebbett for inserts. And uh, he says Rob Tebbett actor. And he goes to all film premieres, but I've not fucking seen him in anything yet. So is that what people do? They say they're an actor. And then they get a camera and start promoting themselves out there. And then they go around fucking rimming boxing promoters. Rob Tebbett should come out with it straight. He should get stuck into Eddie and have a stub up. Pay-per-view prices. Fights that have never happened and blah de blah Should do the job right. Nobody's ever really cross-examined Eddie Earn about the whole Hara Davis mess with Sims as have they. Rob Tebbett's had plenty time to do that. But he just doesn't seem to do it, does he? So, as far as I'm concerned, do you know what I mean? Uh, Rob Tebbert, you're an Elmer, you're in at number 10 for June, so well done. So, it is what it is, isn't it? But, what can you do? But, like I just said, Rob Tebbert, you're there, you're in the mix. But anyway, which brings me to number 9. Number nine, number nine, helmet of the month. You've got it. It's Gareth A. Davis. Oh, Gareth A. Davis, eh? He is always in the mix. Gareth A. Davis. He's another one. He's a big Tyson Fury rimmer. Now, Gareth A. Davis has come out and he's coming out with stuff like. I always knew Anthony uh, Joshua would get knocked out against Wilder and things like that. Well, I I can show you. I can show you stuff where Gareth A. Davis, not, not saying that when he's in Joshua's company. Jesus, he it, it was rimming him and rimming him and rimming him. And he's another one of them media guys that just turns just like that. When it suits him, because he well, cause he wants access, but it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. But Gareth A. Davis, 
You are a helmet of the month. Yet again, number nine. Who knows, you might even win it one day. We're all rimming, you do. In at number eight, we've just spoke about him. There's only one person who can be number eight for this month. With the amount of votes he's got as well. He usually gets uh, a mention, but number eight, helmet of the month. On 15 minutes into the video is... AJ, a.k.a. the Big Dosser, a.k.a. Femi. That's right, Femi. For a simple reason, he's just behaved like a helmet, hasn't he? Since he's been smoked. Since he got smoked by Ruiz, he's just behaving like a helmet. He behaved like a helmet in the ring afterwards. Instead of, instead of you know... Having a go at referee, he just seemed to accept everything. He went into uh, company man mode. I call it company man mode because that's what fucking mode he went into. Um, he should just be embarrassed about how he behaved. It's just, just embarrassing. So AJ, you're a helmet. Uh, you know all this talk about. You know, there was something wrong, this and that. Why don't you just come out? Instead of, you've got the rematch, fair enough, but instead of just coming out with all this chit-chat, why don't you just come out and explain what had happened that, you know, you weren't happy before the fight and all, and, and all that. You, you know, but they don't want to cause friction, do they, in the camp? They want to keep it all, you know, we'll get the rematch and blah de blah and they're trying to pour, they're trying to make out that it's good to lose. People are going to say, oh, Porky, you can't win, can't win, can he? You can't win. Well, look, the milk in it, coming out with them T-shirts on. You know, that T-shirt that he came out with, no excuses and blah de blah And what are all fucking that about? Eh? And then they go on Under Armour website and they're selling them T-shirts about him getting knocked out and not having no excuses and all that crap. Fucking hell, you should be number one helmet a month, not number eight. So, it is what it is, isn't it? Totally embarrassing. So, number eight, Joshua for June, helmet a month, pound for pound. Number seven, Mr. Bean. Run a bean, could have been, fucking should have been, never been. I'll strangle you, Mr. Bait Bean. Adam Smith, just tell us where the children are buried, will you? Adam Smith, what can we say? He's everybody's favourite kidnapper that tortures people and puts them in fucking basements, doesn't he? He is not wrapped up right. You three need to get hold of his computer, because he is not well. Now, when it comes out about him, people are going to say, Fucking hell, I told you. I told you. Just like they did about Jimmy Savile. Well, let me tell you this, right? Let me tell you this. Adam Smith... He's not well. He's not a well man. He is not a well man at all. He can't be well, can he? He can't be well looking like that. He can't be well, but it is what it is, isn't it? You know, people are going to give him enough. They're going to give him all the coolness he needs. And, but there's an old saying, isn't there? Give him enough rope, they'll hang us then, but he gets away with murder, Adam Smith, in my opinion. <laughs> He's got too much power. But what can you do? It's boxing, in it? We have to take it on chin and move on. But what can you do? It's, uh It's craziness, isn't it? But number... So Adam Smith's number seven for month. Number six for June. Well, I think people are, put, are, are putting votes in about people who I'm close to. Right, they're doing it to cause friction, knowing that, you know, that my business partner, Nicola, she has to do everything by the book. Everything by the book. Now, so people have done this just to piss me off and cause problems. Because it probably will cause me shit, this, but... Denny Sobson is number six. Helmet of the month. Why? Well, people are saying he's number six because of the Sonny Edwards fight and that he's not made it. But 
Dennis has already said it's going to happen next year when they've both got a few more wins under the belt. I mean, Tommy Frank's hardly had any rounds, has he, so far? And Sonny Edwards, they haven't, and they've sparred a few times, and that fight's going to happen next year, but at the moment, Tommy is headlining on TV in his own town. Is Sonny Edwards headlining yet? Has he even headlined? So, but, you know... But Dennis is number six, number six helmet of the month for June. So what can you do? It's uh, it's crazy, isn't it? Proper crazy. Now number five helmet of the month, Spencer Oliver. Spencer Oliver now. Spencer Oliver, whoever is employing him as a pundit on the night, he will go with her narrative. That's just how Spencer Fearing is. Spencer Spencer Oliver is. He will he will not big up the other fighter. He will only big up his fighter and you know, every time I hear him talk about a fight, it's only a matter of seconds before he says, boxing is on everybody's list, look at Anthony Joshua. Well, he won't be able to mention Anthony Joshua in any of his commentary now, will he? Eh? But, one of the biggest rumours in boxing, no ifs or buts about it, it's just, it's true. He's one of the biggest rumours in boxing. Spencer Oliver. Welcome aboard. Just like them at Bridlington when you go when you're walking around Arbor. Speedboat rides, come aboard. Well, Spencer Oliver, come aboard on helmets of the month. Number five for June 2019. Number four, Eduardo. He's always there. Hoo-hoo. Eddie Hearn. Well. He's just had to pull a Sky Show, hasn't he? He looks a proper helmet for that, doesn't he? Pulling, cancelling Sky boxing shows, eh? Why? Why is that? I'll tell you why he's done it. Because they've not done the tickets and he don't want to do his conkers on the show. This is why Sky need to work with other promoters. But they shouldn't have to go through Eddie Hearn to get other promoters on board. Because the Hearns are looking to monopolise everything, aren't they? Well, this is what happens when you have monopolising. You pay for your Sky subscriptions every month and then they cancel shows. It looks embarrassing. What are they doing? They're just abusing it, aren't they, now, the Hearns? They are just abusing it. You know what I mean? It's, it's just one big load of abuse every single month. But yeah, the shows in America are bang on, aren't they? So, Eddie Earn, you're a prick and a helmet. So, but you're 40 now, Eddie, so I might send you some Viagra. Because you're probably struggling, aren't you, to perform. Do you know what I mean? So, but it is what it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It is what it is. But what can you do? Eddie Earn, you are helmet of the month for June 2019. Number three. God. Frank Smith with the spots from Matchroom. You've got it. Here's Frankie. Frankie Smith with the spots. Yeah, you've got it, old Frankie. He's back, walking around with his hair all half shaved that Eddie's done. Well, who gives a fuck about that? Just get the fights made. Just get them made and do the do your job properly. That's what I think. Do your job properly. Get the fights on. That's what we want. So, no, not really much else I can say about them, but Frank. Get them Oxy-10. Oxycute them, Frank, with Oxy-10. That's what you need to do. Oxycute them, Spots. And uh, they'll go. Alright. So, I don't mean to have a go at Frank Smith. 
I mean, he is a helmet. Everybody knows he's a fucking helmet. Do you know what I mean? But it is what it is, isn't it? He is a fucking prick. And what can you do? What can you do? No. But, you know, that's life, isn't it? So, anyway. Frank Smith, you are a helmet of the month. But guess what? Guess what? In at number two. Ian John Lewis. Oh my God. Ian John Lewis. What can we say about this man? Apart from the fact that he could stop a bus at 100 mile an hour in middle of London. Ian John Lewis. Is he the most... I don't know. Is he the most... Awful ref, awful judge. He's like, he's the Jonah of boxing, isn't he? Ian John Lewis. I mean, his cock ups are monumental. Some of the cock ups that he's done. I mean, the Enzo Macarinelli against Shane McPhilbin. We all remember that fight, don't we? That's probably the worst ever fight ever I've ever seen. Now, were Ian John Lewis involved in that? I think he were, wasn't he? Didn't he stop it or something when, they were, when he shouldn't have done? Uh, I might have that wrong, but I'm sure he did. But I swear to God, Ian John Lewis is... The guy's just a joke, isn't he? The scorecards for the O'Hara Davis. I mean, what were he watching? I mean, why did he wear his glasses in ring so he could see? I mean, the man wears fucking glasses. And he's refereeing without his fucking glasses on. It's like a, a man who's got bad eyesight driving a fucking car without his glasses. I mean, what the fucking hell's going on here? I mean, I mean, we've got judges in the 70s who can't fucking see and who are drinking on the night. And we've got fucking Ian John Lewis, who's a blind man with bad eyes. He's really got bad eyesight. But yeah... You don't wear them in ring. I mean, what the fucking hell's going on? I mean, he stopped that fight, didn't he? Enzo Macronelli against Shane McVilbin. That were a shocker. Terrible fucking fight, that. Terrible. That fight were disgusting. I mean, in that, that fight where... The, didn't they ring bell or fucking... The, the, the calamitous decisions in that fight. I'm sure Bell got rung early in one of them fights or something. I, I can't remember it, but you'd have to go check it out. Ian, Shane, sorry, Shane McPhilbin against Enzo Macronelli. I'm sure Bell got rung early in that fight, or Ian John Lewis stopped it or something. But the man just creates uh, fucking balls up, doesn't he? He's, I think of him, and I think of Frank Spencer. He's the Frank Spencer of boxing, isn't he? Ian John Lewis. So I'll slip a picture of Frank Spencer in there, Nicola, at 28 minutes. You know, um, Betty, Frank Spencer, but Ian John Lewis, oh my God. Helmet of the Month, number two. Which brings us to Helmet of the Month for number one. Well, what can we say about this man here? He is a failed boxer. A failed trainer, a failed manager, a failed promoter, everybody lost the money who invested with him. And he's a boxing historian that when when he did a toe-to-toe -to -toe with Carl Froch, he didn't know who was the only man that Carl Froch has rematched. And it's Mikhail Kessler. And he didn't know that, and he also didn't know who was a former WBC British champion that Carl Froch fought and stopped. He didn't even know that. He was Robin Reed. So this is a boxing historian. So you can say he's a failed boxing historian. You've got it. The one and only Spencer Fearon, a.k.a. Malcolm X. You are a helmet of the month. For June 2019, Spencer Fearon. Now, if anybody don't believe me what I've just said there, go on to Spencer Fearon's Toe to Toe and watch the interview we did with Carl Froch. Mr. Boxing Historian, right? Mr. Boxer, 
journeyman boxer who, as soon as he got hit a couple of times, he quit, he didn't like it. Failed trainer, failed boxer, failed manager. He's now reinventing himself as a boxing historian, but he's failed at that. And he's, and he's now trying to go around talking about race and diversity and all that. The guy's a fucking prick. So, Spencer Fearing, you're a prick. So, Spencer Fearing. So, let's read him out from 15 to number one. Number 15, Helmet at Mont for June 2019. Johnny Nelson, 15. Joseph Parker, 14. Tony Bellew, 13. Prince Patel, 12. Jake Wood, 11. Rob Tebbett, number 10. Gareth A. Davis, number 9. Anthony Joshua, number 8. You prick. Adam Smith, Mr. Bean, number 7. Dennis Hobson, Den Den. Number six, can I be for I jump on that one? Number five, Spencer Oliver, your helmet. Number four, Eduardo, Eddie Hearn. Number three, Frank Smith with the spots from Eddie Hearn's office, the T boy. Number two, the man that can stop a bus at 200 mile an hour on Old Kent Road. That's right, you've got it. Ian John Lewis, the man who wears glasses to drive a car but don't wear them when he's in the ring. A fucking blind man. And that's right, you've got it. Number one, Spencer Fearing, a.k.a. Malcolm X. He's the Ian John Lewis, a boxing sidekick. Just another man out there promoting himself. If he's not promoting himself as a fighter, a trainer, a manager, promoter, or a boxing historian, or a commentator, which Sky let him, they've not let him do. Or a pundit, which they've not letting him do. He's Mr. Podcast Man. He's just like me, a podcast man. At the bottom of the ladder. But, he likes to take it upon himself to go out there chatting about race and going on about... Why Matchroom and Sky don't employ black people and blah de blah de blah and he's flying the flag all the time for race and saying we're all one we're all one one race. Why are you talking about race all the time, Spencer Fearing, and trying to create people to feel sorry for you and all that because you're a black man and blah de blah. Yeah, we are all equal, but why are you going on about it all the time, eh? We're all God's children, we know that, but why are you always going on about it, trying to be controversial? And Because I've heard that nobody at Sky dare approach you and talk about anything like this because you start going off on one. And that's probably why they keep you there at Sky because you keep talking about this and you're probably going to kick up a fuss about it. Because you're just going to create a little bit of a following and you're just going to be known as the man who talks about race and diversity all the time. You're just being a fucking prick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Matchroom have never employed anybody who's a black man. We know what you're trying to make, point you're trying to make, but that's their choice, isn't it? It's not... It's, it's hard to explain, but that is their... Is, that's Barry Hearn's choice. <laughs> But the the they seem to make millionaires out of black people in boxing. So stop going on about race. I'm sure if there was somebody highly qualified to work in boxing who was black uh, as a matchmaker or as somebody in Barry Earns' office, Spencer, I'm sure he'd do that. I mean, you work at Sky, don't you? You're a black man. Johnny Nelson's there, and there's there's other black people there. So stop going on about race. It makes people uncomfortable. People don't approach the subject, and as soon as you start talking it, the, we have a wall of silence, Spencer. Do you know what I mean? We have a wall of si silence, and people don't touch the subject. They don't touch it in Parliament. They don't touch it on the TV. They don't touch the subject in the newspapers, and you know that, Spencer. So stop going on about diversity in boxing. You're becoming fucking boring. Talk about boxing is what, what, which is what you're supposed to talk about in interviews on IFL. Stop promoting yourself and going on about fucking diversity and, and then going on about MTK arse licking them. Just talk about fucking boxing, all right, Spencer. Talk about boxing. I've got a mate called Chep Terry Chapendama. 
right? Who, who, who's a coloured, who's a coloured person or black person, whatever you, whatever word you call it. Uh, I don't know. I've had people tell me you don't, you can't call it a coloured, a coloured, but the coloured word it has to be. You're either black or white. Well, we, where I come from, I was fetched up to say coloured. So, but you'll not get me feeling uncomfortable, uncomfortable around this subject, Spencer. Stop being a prick. I've got mates like Terry and Rico, and they don't come out with anything like that. I never hear them speak like that. So stop showing yourself up in front of your own people. Alright, and being a dick. You deserve to be number one, helmet of the month. Alright, so peace out. Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Uh, it's a fantastic sport. Alright, peace out.